As you probably already know, at the beginning of the month, US President Donald Trump authorized a drone strike which killed Qasem Soleimani, one of Iran's most powerful military commanders. Since the campaign trail, Trump has promised to reduce the number of American troops in the Middle East, but instead tensions have increased and it looks like we could be on the brink of a major crisis. So in this video, we're going to explain what happened and discuss Trump's strategy in Iran. Before we do, let me encourage you to subscribe. If you want more US news from TLDR, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications when we post. Qasem Soleimani was the commander of the Kurds Force, a unit of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps. This unit is the overseas or foreign expeditionary arm of the IRGC and is a very significant part of Iran's military. In his role, Soleimani led Iran's campaign across the Middle East, including a counter-ISIS campaign, as well as assisting Assad in the Syrian civil war. By killing Soleimani, the US has made major waves in the Middle East, shaping the US-Iranian relationship and potentially changing Iran's plans in the region. As I mentioned, Soleimani has been responsible for waging wars across the region, with his unit killing thousands and even appearing on the US's terrorism list. In fact, Soleimani himself has been designated as a terrorist by the United States. That's because the US saw his work as running counter to their attempts to promote stability in the region, and by killing him, the US is hoping to send a clear message. That doesn't mean assassinating him is standard procedure though. Killing a high-ranking official from another country would always be a controversial move regardless of motive, and there are a lot of people calling the US out for a perceived act of war. And this certainly didn't come out of nowhere. For some time, there have been increasing tensions between the US and Iran. A lot of this can be traced back to Trump pulling out of the Iran nuclear deal. This deal removed sanctions from Iran in return for them limiting their nuclear program. To many, this compromise was a great success, and the official data shows that Iran's stockpiles were greatly reduced as a result of the deal. However, Trump and others believe that the deal was fundamentally flawed. They didn't trust Iran, and even with checks in place, they thought that Iran couldn't be trusted to handle any nuclear material, regardless of quantity or the purpose of its use. However, despite Trump's concerns, the deal's other signatories stuck by its terms, believing in the deal's continued value. But with the US gone, Iran started to stop cooperating with all of the deal's terms. With the US out of the deal, they began to up the economic pressure on Iran, reintroducing the sanctions that the deal sought to end. This put a great deal of pressure on the nation, and in return, the Iranians had begun to strike out against America, attacking American allies in the region in recent months. In fact, the Iranians have also begun to attack US military and diplomatic facilities, including the killing of a US contractor and an attack on the US embassy. So this strike certainly didn't come out of a vacuum, and both sides have been increasing tensions for some time now, and this is the latest, most high-profile example of this conflict. So let's look at why the Trump administration authorised this strike. Despite many calling it an act of war, it looks unlikely that the administration truly want to provoke a full military conflict with Iran. War with Iran would be difficult and costly for the US. While they have a material advantage, Iran has a geographic advantage and can strike the US and her allies with proxies. It will quickly descend into a protracted, bloody and deeply unpopular conflict. Instead, senior US officials seem to subscribe to the theory that if you hit Iran hard enough with military action and economic sanctions, then they'll retreat. They theorise that the cooperation with Iran that was conducted by the Obama administration has only fueled the nation, so Trump is trying to force them to capitulate, potentially sparking major conflict and change in the region. As I said, this is more likely to be the US attempting to send a message to Iran than them trying to provoke a war. From a purely political perspective, Trump must know that starting a new war in the Middle East could prove to be a very unpopular move, something that could be especially damaging during an election year. Trump has also repeatedly complained about the US's involvement in the Middle East, and a lot of his base support his rhetoric about decreasing the US's presence in the region. Going against this and sparking a brand new conflict likely won't go down well from a political perspective. Since stepping away from the 2015 Iran deal, Trump has insisted that he wants to negotiate a new deal with Iran, and he is likely hoping that this new strategy will force Iran into a corner and compel them to return to the negotiating table. In fact, the politics of this situation might have contributed to Trump signing off on the attack. PJ Crowley is a former US Assistant Secretary of State, and he told the BBC that Trump isn't a grand strategist, and he thinks that Trump would jump at the opportunity to take out a bad hombre that Obama didn't. Equally though, Trump might have felt forced into this position. 
In the same BBC article, the director of the Allison Center for Foreign Policy and the Heritage Foundation said that Trump had been painted into a corner after Iran and Soleimani attacked US interests, including killing a US contractor, he believes that Trump had little choice but to strike back. Taking out a high-level figure in the IRGC for an attack by Iranian proxies places Iran in a difficult position. It demonstrates that Trump is willing to strike them for the action of their proxies. It reduces the freedom of action that the Kurds and their proxies have enjoyed under Soleimani. In an election year, Trump might not want to deploy US troops into the Middle East, but it certainly does look like he wants to show that the US can't be pushed around and make him look like a master deal maker. Equally though, this was a very controversial move, and to many foreign policy experts, it looks like a step towards a new conflict in the Middle East. We were interested in what you think. Do you think America should be getting involved in issues like this? Do you think that Trump was acting in the interests of Americans or his re-election campaign? Do you think this will further escalate the conflict in the region, or do you think this strike will force Iran back to the negotiating table? Be sure to let us know in the comments down below. Also, if you're interested in this issue, we have a video up on our UK channel where we discuss Iran's history with nuclear technology, and if this conflict could lead them developing nuclear weapons. There's a link to that video down below. If you want more US content like this, be sure to subscribe to this dedicated TLDR US channel.